Hi everyone. So let's begin with the second part of parasitology. I have already discussed nematodes, and uh, you can see that video if you haven't already. And in this video, we will be talking about the second part of helminths, that is the platyhelminths. So uh, platyhelminths are roughly divided into two: cystodes, which are the tapeworm, and the trematodes. Cystodes, beginning with them first. The, the organisms present in cystodes are the tapeworms, and we need to know the common name, the infective form, egg, and the special point regarding them. First, very importantly, we have tinea solium. So tinea solium is the pork tapeworm, and we need to know both the diseases it causes. First is tineasis, which is an intestinal disease, and the second is cysticercosis, which can most commonly go to the brain. And when cysticercosis goes to the brain, it is called neurocysticercosis. Right? So let's talk about the infective form. In tineasis, the infective form is larva, and in bracket is given which organism you can get the infection when you ingest the larva which is in the pig muscle the second is cysticercosis where the infective form is egg and we ingest the undercooked veggies from which we can get the infection very important is the egg of tinea solium which is very frequently asked as a previous year question the next point is regarding neurocysticercosis neurocysticercosis which is very very commonly asked both in microbiology and medicine so discussing the treatments separately we usually give steroids in the beginning and under cover of steroids we give the antiparasitic drug that is albendazole I will be discussing the pharmacology later, but neurocysticercosis is a special point. That's why I've discussed. Now, neurocysticercosis comes as one of the DDs of ring-enhancing lesion on MRI, right? This is the lesion on MRI. Do tell me in the comment section the other DDs. Talking about the radiology of tinea solium, you can easily see this is the radiology of NCC, which is frequently asked in I and I. So do remember this image. Second is when the organism spreads throughout the body, it can also spread in the muscle, and that's why we see this rice grain calcification present in the thigh muscles. So most common site of cysticercosis is brain, and the second most common site is the muscle, as is given here. Now, talking about the other organisms, the second organism is Tegia saginata, which is the beef tapeworm. The infective form is larva, which we get from the cow. We have Diaphylobothrium latum, which is the fish tapeworm, and the larva is taken in through the scales of the fish. So, this question is commonly asked that Diaphylobothrium latum has two intermediate hosts. The first is Cyclops, and the second is fish. Talking about the egg of uh, Diaphylobothrium latum, the egg has a covering or an operculum. This is the diagnostic feature, and this question is also asked. The clinical disease it causes is diaphylobothrius anemia, which is a kind of B12 deficiency anemia. This is again a previous year question. Remembering what I discussed in my previous video, ankylostoma, which is the hookworm, causes iron deficiency anemia, right? So remember both these points together. The next is a kinococcus granulosum. So kinococcus granulosum is a very important disease which you must study in surgery and it is known as dog tapeworm. The intermediate host is sheep. The infective form is egg. This is the egg and the disease it causes is hydatid disease. Now let's see the radiology which is important. As you can see, hydatid cyst forms these cyst-like structures in the liver and this is known as the serpent sign or the crumpled tissue paper appearance. You also have the Gherbi classification for classifying hydatid cysts several stages. On the ultrasound, you can see this cartwheel appearance. So these are all the named points that are present for hydatid cyst of the liver. Now, hydatid disease of the lung has also a named sign. As you can see, this is a cavity on which there are floating daughter hooklets of the hydatid cyst. This is known as the camelot sign and this is present in pulmonary hydatid. Talking about the next tapeworm, we have Hymenlopsis nana. This is the most common tapeworm. The fecal root, you ingest the egg and that's how you get the disease and this is the egg. So just remember this egg is also important and is asked once. So you have the polar filaments as is mentioned in the diagram which helps you recognize the egg. Now, let me talk about roughly the trematodes, which are the flukes. So, trematodes, the very, very important organism that we need to know, which is the most frequently asked previous question is schistosoma. Schistosoma has three species. It can be schistosoma hematobium, mansoni, and japonicum. The common name is blood flukes. Now, schistosoma, as you can 
see in your notes that there is a life cycle and you just need to know the very important points that hematobium resides in the vesical venous plexus. It penetrates the vesical venous plexus and hence it causes hematuria. So a cause of painless hematuria in the clinical vignette along with a parasite is cystosoma hematobium. The infective form for all the three is cercaria and you get the infection by skin penetration. Right? Also remember that cystosoma is a very common cause of bladder calcification. So whenever there is calcification of the bladder rather than TB, TB is also one of the cause but cystosoma is more likely. Then the next disease, it is an implicated risk factor in SCC of the bladder. So bladder cancer is three types, transitional, adenocarcinoma and SCC. Most common is transitional cell cancer of the bladder but a risk factor for the SCC is schistosoma. Remember, this is also a previous year question, so I've just combined this here itself, the uh, surgery part of it, that the risk factor for transitional cell cancer can be rem remembered by the two C, cigarette and chemical dyes, whereas for SCC of the bladder, the risk factor is schistosoma. And another extra edge point is for adenocarcinoma of the bladder, the risk factor is patent uracus. So coming on to the other organism that is Cystosoma mansoni, this penetrates the inferior mesenteric uh, vein and hence you will find that uh, GIT symptoms are caused both in Japonicum as it penetrates the superior mesenteric vein. Now a very important question is identifying the egg. So remember that eggs have spine. Now for hematobium there is a terminal spine, for mansoni there is a lateral spine and for Japonicum the spine may or may not be present. So whenever you have a circular egg and you see that there is some history that there is infection by the skin penetration or they've given the photo of cercaria. These are bifogged, bitailed structures as you can see. This is the infective stage and this is the egg that you will see on stool examination. Also, just to have a look here, this is the bladder. This is the histopath image of the bladder after infection with schistostoma hematobium. For the other trematodes, you're usually only asked the common names and the form. So just remember roughly for the infective form for schistosoma cercaria and all the other trematodes, the infective form is metacercaria. Right? This is the only important part that you need to know. So faciola hepatica is the liver fluke, Lenorchis sinensis is the Chinese liver fluke and I've given in brackets the source of infection. So the metacercaria will be ingested through the water plant that you have eating that will be the intermediate host. Now, clonorchus sinensis, remember it's a risk factor for cholangiocarcinoma. Paragonimus vestimini causes the lung fluke and you get it through ingestion of the crab or the crayfish which is the intermediate host. Faciolopsis buski is the intestinal fluke and you get it through water chestnut. That is all you need to know. So this table is sufficient for you and you've easily concised all those 50 to 100 pages of your notes of parasitology in just one table with all the previous questions. This is roughly very simply what you need to know about the platyhelminths. Now let's talk about the pharmacology. It is extremely easy. So all platyhelminths, the drug of choice is as I've highlighted P for P, prosequental. Only there are three exceptions. So first exception we've already discussed, that is neurocystisarcosis, where the drug of choice is albendazole. The second disease, which is also very important, is echinococcus granulosus, the causative organism of hydatid cyst. Here also it's albendazole. And the third is faciolopsis uh, faciola hepatica where the drug of choice is triclobendazole. So do watch my previous video where I've discussed that all these drugs are part of the imidazoles group so remember that okay and a rough rule for all of these is all platyhelminths that the definitive host is man right except one disease and that is very important that is neurocystisarcosis in neurocystisarcosis man is the intermediate host that is the only exception so you do need to remember for each and every organism just remember these broad basic rules and that's how we have summarized platyhelminths for you. Keep a look for my other videos on microbiology and I hope you had a happy learning. Thank you.